Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include criminal sanctions for insider dealing and market manipulation. Greek police ban protests during EU meetings in Athens. And Thomas Cook boss Inderef and EU vote create massive uncertainty for businesses. Reform European Union to help reshore jobs. Plus, Groundhog Day for the EU and Ukraine minus Crimea. Today sees the Competition and Markets Authority take over the reins from the Competition Commission, promising to reduce energy costs. Reducing energy costs is apparently also a key plank for Mr Cameron. However, as the IPCC released its damning report on climate change, in Mr Cameron's next breath, he was stating that Britain should be in the lead for green energy. Now, given that the UK government can't financially intervene with the private energy sector as a result of European Union state aid law, and as we've clearly demonstrated on this show with the Hinkley C reactor investigation, then there is only one place that the UK can go for the money to fund a world-leading green energy strategy, the private sector. Increasing the burden on the private sector has the result of increased prices to the consumer. So, as usual, something doesn't add up in this equation. It's Tuesday, the 1st of April. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, from our legislation section on our website, theunituk.com, criminal sanctions for insider dealing and market manipulation. New legislation uncovered by our research team highlights further criminal justice powers being vested by our EU overlords in Brussels pertaining to the financial markets sector. The report stipulates that this directive should ensure the integrity of the financial markets and enhance investor protection and confidence in those markets within the EU. The directive should apply to interest rates, currency benchmarks, interbank offer rates, indexes and various types of financial instruments, including any derivative contracts or derivative instruments which derive their value from the value of interest rates, currencies or indexes. Again, Whilst last year we saw more vacuous words from Mr Cameron with his vision to protect the City of London as a critical financial centre, however, our EU moguls have other ideas and they're determined to centralise finance control in Frankfurt and Paris. Greek police ban protests during EU meetings in Athens. Greek police have banned protests in Athens when the Greek capital hosts a meeting of the European Union finance ministers on Tuesday and Wednesday, citing security reasons. Demonstrators will be banned from rallying or marching in the centre of the capital, including around Parliament in Syntagma Square, the focus of often violent protests against austerity measures imposed under the country's bailout plans. Athens has implemented such bans several times in the past, including when German Finance Minister Wolfgang Schobel and German Chancellor Angela Merkel made high-profile visits to the Greek capital. Schobel is among ministers expected to attend the meetings this week. As Mr Barroso said in his State of the Union address, we want more freedom, more democracy. Well, clearly Mr Barroso was referring to the Bruswellian kleptocrats rather than the 500 million subservient peasant serfs shivering under the watchful eye of the EU Commission. Oh, that's the EU's executive arm, by the way. Thomas Cook, Boss, Indiref and EU vote create massive uncertainty for businesses. The referendum on Scottish independence and the potential referendum on the UK's EU membership create massive uncertainty for business, the chief executive of travel firm Thomas Cook has warned. Harriet Green said both votes are unsettling for companies seeking to create jobs and attract investment. Ms Green said there are two political uncertainties that are most unsettling for businesses. The first is the Scottish referendum and the second is the European referendum. Both create massive uncertainty. 
For me, what we should be focused on is creating jobs. If you take the European market, the biggest trading market that we are part of, and we are contemplating exiting that market, how could that be good for jobs? <laughs> well, clearly, once the protectionist Little Englander agenda gets rolled out by those radical folks that believe they should be free to govern themselves, well, the holiday market outside of Britain will clearly collapse. All 72 million British subjects will return to traditional holiday resorts in Britain. And of course, with a newly invigorated border agency, the doors to foreign visitors will be slammed shut. Of course, all this will be great news for the next Billy Butlin. And of course, a massive holiday revival in Margate. Reform European Union to help reshore jobs. A snapshot CBI survey published today shows that while there is a small but growing trend for firms to bring back parts of their business to Europe, from manufacturing to customer services, many more would consider doing so if the European Union reformed to become more competitive. The qualitative survey of more than 50 senior business leaders in the UK, Germany, France, Italy and the Netherlands, who together employ over one million workers and generate nearly a trillion pounds in annual revenue, reveals that 60% said that the EU reform that resulted in better regulation would be the key factor leading to them reshoring parts of their businesses. Well, well, isn't it interesting that over 60% of businesses in the UK are small businesses employing less than 10 people. Given that in the private sector this represents the lion's share of private sector GDP and jobs, no one in the mainstream media seems to be asking them. Well, here at the unit we have been asking them. In fact, we've been out talking to them at business breakfast meetings, something that I personally have been involved in. And I can tell you that the feedback from them is one of disillusion with Europe and in fact EU red tape which is crushing their businesses and stifling their ability to compete. Groundhog Day for the EU and Ukraine minus the Crimea. Ukraine has now signed part of its association agreement with the EU. Three out of seven chapters, general principles, institutions and the somewhat controversial political chapter the chapters on trade have been postponed, though the EU has unilaterally removed tariffs on Ukrainian goods. The political chapter includes provisions on defence, including promoting gradual convergence in the area of foreign and security policy, including the common security and defence policy. This raises two questions. Firstly, is the EU repeating the same mistake again? It's now accepted that it was a mistake to effectively try to force Ukraine to choose between Russia and the EU, an impossible choice for Kiev. As we argued in our recent briefing on this topic, the EU's all-or-nothing approach to its neighbourhood is no longer a suitable model for dealing with countries that don't have an immediate prospect of full EU membership, both in terms of how it risks drawing new dividing lines and creating new geopolitical hotspots, the opposite to what EU enlargement has always aimed to achieve, and due to the very high barriers to EU membership existing as a result of decades of ever closer union. New updates to our video library today. This video should make fascinating watching. Whilst the BBC, Sky News and the rest of the mainstream media paints Russia as the invading devils and writes up the Ukrainian coup as a peaceful protest getting out of hand. However, as this video demonstrates, the evidence doesn't support this position. Both the European Union and the United States are deeply implicated. The video highlights the key meetings and relationships and indeed leaked phone calls that tell a very different story than the one that you have already heard. Now, funded by the US through a clandestine NGO and working in cahoots with the EU Commission, you know, the EU's executive arm, perhaps that should read EU's executes arms, the Ukraine crisis appears to have been deliberately destabilised as part of a geopolitical global strategy. Remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. 
Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinion, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.